Tyler won his match. Tyler Adelini and Paul Adelini are both on the winner side still. So they're over in Waynesboro. Um, Greg Roberts uh, is from uh, the Dundalk, uh, Baltimore area, Dundalk. He plays out of the green room. So for all you Baltimore guys up there, um, Greg is still representing, still pushing it. Jeff is in the black hustler shirt. Greg is in the, that is a lobster shirt. So I'm already a fan of him already. So absolutely. We're getting close to the end. Um, I think this is, this is a B-side match, um, but I think if they win, this is like a quarterfinal match. Um, all of the A-side is done um, and waiting for the B-side to come around. Uh, this is a B-side match now, so we pretty much have uh, either win or go home, you know? So, again, this is a race to seven. For those just tuning in, this is a combination of eight ball and nine ball. Um, Jeff decided to break first, so Greg chose eight ball first. Sorry, guys. I had to do a little smack talking real quick to Dave Barnes and uh, Jamie Brogdon. They're both still in. That was a winner's side match, so they're both still in. Nice shot. If we have any PA people out there, let me know. If we have any Baltimore area people out there, let me know. So he gave himself a good angle. He's gonna have to just put just a little bit of stun on it to kind of get back to that three. He just needs to slide past the nine ball there. Don't get behind the 14. Don't do that to him. Oh, that was, I think he just got unlucky. He hit that ball almost perfect. He played it right. Sometimes you just did an inch will, which inch will tear you out. Jeff has a pretty open table. It's 
So those of you trying to get better at eight ball, this is definitely a, a, a drill type situation. Uh, one thing that I do to improve my eight ball game is I literally set up this scenario. Because um, we all know that how many times does a player run out to maybe one ball left or you know down to the eight and miss, and then now you have a wide open table. In these situations, you have to be able to run out. Um, there's nothing blocking anything. Nothing's in the way. I will guarantee you will win many, many more matches if you can run these type of situations out. This is one of those practice opportunities that happens more often than you think in a, in a, in a match. A lot of times when it, before I start a tournament, if I know it's an eight ball tournament, I'll literally just throw one set out, just throw the stripes out or just throw the solids out and just run out the rack. Just make balls. You know, nothing's in the way, nothing's hindering my, you know, pattern at all. Just practice on running a set out so that when it comes up in a, in a match where they do run down to one ball or run down to the eight and miss, you just did this earlier in the day and it should be a piece of cake. Hey, Mike McCall, thanks for checking in. Baltimore, baby. Nice shot. He's just going to just stop it right there, shoot it in the side. Nice stop shot, and he'll have the eight in the side. And Jeff is on the board. So yeah, if you guys want to improve your eight ball ratings in APA or want to get better, I'm telling you, take the time. Even if you want to start with, let's say, three balls, if you're you know, rated a two or three, start with just throwing three balls out on a table and just try to run them out. You know, two balls in the eight. Pretend you're in an eight ball game where they miss the eight and you have two balls left on the table and just practice getting out. You know, you'll when you play other twos and threes, that's going to be a very big, you know, key to winning a lot of matches. Obviously, if you're a little bit higher skill rank, you know, throw four or five balls out there. Just one set. Don't have any other, don't have any stripes or don't have the other set out there. And just practice running out. Obviously, you know, the, the higher skill level you get, you can throw the whole set out there. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll practice running out, and if I can do it five times consecutively and run five racks in a row, I'll throw out maybe one or two stripes and then put them in places where I kind of have to get around them, where I have to actually maneuver around the stripes. Um, that way, you know, you can practice, you know, balls that might be in the way and just work your way up. I guarantee your eight ball game will improve. Guarantee it. That's my, that's my lock drill right there. He's a, he's a little straighter than he wanted to, so he's got to kind of give it a punch. He's got to get off that rail. Oh. He had to hit it hard, but also he, he missed it just slightly. So therefore, it rattled out. So that 
seven that came up to block that pocket was key. So now Jeff has to clear that corner up there. That's his first problem area. I would say you'd probably take that nine first and then shoot the 14 down. But either way, I don't think it really matters. They both are just fine options. So now he's going to take that nine and come off the rail so he can get the, I think that's the 15 right in the middle of the table there. His only real problem now is that 12 ball that's sitting on the far left side above that six there. Oh, he punched it. Punched it. I don't know why he punched it, but he punched it. I'm not sure if he wanted to come off the ball, but it actually worked out fairly well for him. He can drift up here so he can get the six next. Oh, he just missed it. And that's gonna allow it's gonna allow Jeff to get that 12. That's that problem ball. He's right on that ball now. So everything's pretty wide open here. He's got a couple options here. He's going to go for that 10. He could go for the, the balls down here and cut it in, or I don't, this is, this is a fine choice. Come off the rail, give himself a little angle. That's perfect. That's exactly where he wants to be. Now he's, he's, got to come off enough to where he doesn't have a big angle in that 13. So he's got to come off a little, he's got to hit it a little bit. That's fine. Because now he can come off the rail and then when he makes that when he makes that 15, he can actually come around to get the 8. He's got an angle. I'm not sure if he's just going to shoot the gate in the side or if he can go around it to shoot the gate in the same corner. No. I don't, don't know if it goes. He's looking. Trying to get his reaction on it. And he's got a stretch down the table too. He's tall. Nice out. There you go. 2 0, Mr. Jeff Jones. From Oxford, Pennsylvania.
Very nice break. Very nice and spread out. Nothing's clustering at all. Literally, the, the area where the balls were racked is completely empty. <laughs> so, very solid break. So I'm not sure some of the other scores, but I know Wayne is currently playing. Nick is currently playing. Uh, who else is playing right now? Tracy Wellens is playing. Um, um, it's Tracy Toll. Uh, who else is playing over there? Got a few of Brett Stottlemyre is playing. Uh, Jamie Brogdon. So we got quite a few matches still going, the solid matches, a lot of good matches. This is where it gets interesting. All right. I think you wanted to get a little better on that, but... His problem ball is the six, so if he can get to the six, because he can shoot this two. And get get over to the seven, but he's got to get on that six, or he's got to knock that six out. I think he's gonna knock out this ball here. Yep, that's what he did. So I can't tell if the six actually goes past. It might, because again, these pockets are are taking taking shots pretty easily because it is newer cloth, so they're sliding in a little bit. If he can get, if the six goes, he's got to get the six now. I think. I think this is his best chance to get the six if it goes in the, in the corner. Which I think it might. He might break it out here. I see him putting some English on it. So he's going to try to spin it around the twelve and try to knock out the six. Great shot. Really nice shot. Well done. So really all he needs to do here is just stun it, come off the rail, and then he's got the he's got the four in that upper corner. And then I would try to use the two as the last ball. Um, so I would come down, make the seven in that corner, and try to get back on the two so he can get the eight. Either way, it doesn't matter, because the uh, eight goes in either side pocket. So he could use the seven or the two. Wherever works best for him is, is what So I think he's got a bad angle on the on the seven. So I think he might have to take the two first. So I think he's gonna because he's he's got that angle on the two there, and he'll what he'll do is he'll come off the rail and have an angle for the seven to come straight down the table and go to the right side of the eight. Oh, he missed it. But that's what he was trying to do. You see where he left the cue ball? He had a really good angle. All you had to do was just off the rail, back down in the middle of the table.
he's he might be off a little bit, but he needs to try to get past that eight ball. He needs to go forward enough to where he can get to the nine and ten because I don't think he wants to take the combination. If he doesn't have to, obviously that's going to benefit him. But I'm not sure the eight might stop his progress there, so he might have to take a different route. He might draw back and shoot the uh, 15 in the same pocket. It's a little too far, so he's on the wrong side of the 15. I think that's good. Nope, that's the 11. Sorry, that's the 11 ball. So he's just going to... I think he's just going to have to accept that he's going to have to take the combo. I think he needs to do it now if he's going to do it. Um, the 11 is kind of your safety ball. So if for some reason something goes wrong or you get bad shape on the 9... Then you can use the eleven to kind of get out of get out of trouble. So we'll see where the nine. I mean, if he makes the ten, if he makes the, uh, the twelve here, we'll see where the nine goes. Hopefully, it sits to where he's got a shot, and it doesn't. So that's where you want to keep the eleven. So now he could have shot that eleven to draw back and get on the nine. So that's the purpose of keeping that extra ball on that table. This is a tough cut. I think he'll make it though. Again, these pockets are a little forgiving. Sliding, usually it's sliding in, so I think it's a very makeable shot. Yep, and he's got to come back down, and he's straight in for the corner. Wow, powerful shot. Nice, confident stroke. Jeff Jones is on a roll here. Jeff has a 3-0 lead. Ball jumps off the table. Sometimes that happens with that corner break. So per APA rules, the ball is in the in the kitchen or behind the spot, behind the line. I think I like, I think I like solids here. Um, I can't tell if the eight ball goes in the top corner there. It does not look like it goes. So that might influence my decision a little bit. Um, The only problem is that 15 ball right in the middle of the table with stripes. So stripes are, the solids are sitting better, but to get to the eight, stripes look better. So he might be able to draw this back on the back, across the one here to kind of get that ball that's tucked right in that middle there. I don't know if he's going to go high on it. Looks like he's doing a high angle. All right. I 
And he's got an angle on it, so that way he can go to the rail. He can go to the rail and come back out and, and kind of graze that eight. The 15's his key ball. He's got to get that ball. He's got to get it out sooner than later. He made it. So he's actually in a good spot. If he can just stop the ball right there, he should have a shot. He's looking at it. So he's looking at it right now. He should have a shot on that 15 and then he can drop back to, to the 13. Ooh, I don't think that's what he wanted. So from here, it looks like Looks like he's got a lot of angle on that ball. Actually, no, it's not too bad. So the 15, looks like the 15 does go in the upper corner. So he might be able to just drift the cue ball down right past that seven there. Shoot the 15 in the upper corner. And then he'll have the eight. Maria As you can see, he's putting a stick there. Got a nice, nice and easy. Just a light hit. He looks like he's gearing up to do something. Well, that wasn't in the plan. Not sure what his focus. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. He might, he might have had a little bit too much angle to uh, to just put it where he wanted to. But the problem was is he saved the toughest ball for last. That was uh, that's the issue. He made the hardest ball the last ball on the table. I thought he made that. Oh, that's a really good attempt. Great, great attempt by by Greg. So Jeff really doesn't have a shot here. I would probably be pushing for a safe somewhere. He doesn't have a clean shot. He's got combos both ways. I mean, he could shoot the three, but I don't, it's, you know, it's a tough shot. If he misses it, I would probably elect to play a safe and just try to play it to where you can see if you can get ball in hand and then kind of cherry pick him off. And that's what he did. Yep, smart safe. Very smart safe. Sometimes you have to have good knowledge of the game in order when to play your safes. Pretty solid with the jump cue. So Masters Rules um, does allow jumping, obviously, as you can see. So it's definitely a big help to some of these guys.
You remember that situation I told you before where a guy runs down to one ball or the eight ball and misses and you have a wide open table? Look what just happened again. So Greg needs to be confident that he's got this in the bag. This, this has to be a win for him. Got a little, got a little awkward on it, but I think he's fine. He's not happy, but he can still shoot that seven ball and get around the table and still have multiple options. Especially when you're playing in a match like this, don't you know? If you don't get perfect, don't get down on yourself. You know, don't don't get upset because the thing is, is that you have options. You still have shots. Just be aware of where you're at and make it work. You know, center English, bring it two rails, get it up to the middle of the table, and he can shoot any ball he wants. Get up there. See, perfect. So he's back in line again. So he doesn't have any reason to be upset or shake his head. He's he's doing just fine. He's playing well. I would just hit the one, come back off the rail, shoot that five in the side, four in the corner, and eight. So one, five, four, eight. He's straight in for the four. Either way, it doesn't matter. Stop for the stop. Uh, stop. Stop shot on the four, and then he should have a slight angle on that five. Or roll it forward so that way he can come off the rail and shoot the eight in the same pocket. But leave yourself. I would leave yourself an angle on that five. So he's going the route, which is fine. Gives himself an angle. It's a nice little draw shot, and he'll be straight in for the eight. I have somebody in the house here. Unbelievable that he's here. Mr. Roy himself from Roy's basement. Roy's basement in the house. Roy's basement in the house. Have you played yet? Um, I won the my I won my bracket, so I'm waiting on the B side. Um, I'm in the finals. You're in the finals. I'm in the finals. That's yeah. why I'm here. What's that? That's why I'm here. You're here to see me. Look at you. Support. Look I at you. Take pictures. I, I know. So it's because it's put it on, on our group chat. You know why? It's because I lost so much money in poker. I think that's why. <laughs> I think that's what really what it is. So, yeah. So this right. is a photography fee, right? <laughs> so Jeff is playing great. He's up to a four-zero lead. Um, Greg's not playing bad. He's just, you know, one or two small errors in, in each rack is just costing him the rack. He's not playing bad. He's not, you know, he's just, it's the small little things in eight ball that really make that difference. And uh, what he's doing is that he's leaving Jeff basically a free run out every rack. That's what he's doing. In three games so far, Greg has run down to one ball or the eight ball and missed. And Jeff just runs out. You can't do that in an eight ball match. All right, good to see Roy. All right, so, so here we go again.
So here's a situation that I see Greg in this match or this game. I would not. I would play a safe right here, or at least try to knock out one of those balls, because the combination might not go. If he can play a safe or play somewhere where he can knock out one of the balls and make it tough, and bring the cue ball to the end rail, then make make Jeff work for it. He's got to make Jeff work for a rack, because right now Jeff hasn't worked for a rack yet. So he played it smart. He played it smart so that he's now got to make Jeff work for it. He didn't try to run out. It was a great shot. And as you can see, Jeff is now, that's, a, that's actually a really great shot because what he did now is he blocked a pocket. So now Greg actually can't get out without figuring out how to get that, that 15 ball up there. So this is where the strategy comes in. Great shot. Perfect. He thinned it. He's got no shot. He's in good position. So Jeff still has the upper hand here as long as he stays patient. And as long as he, he understands that he, you know, he blocked the pocket. He could start positioning his balls to where he wants to, to where they're in the open. So that way he can get the advantage of the table. Okay, it's still good. So far the difference in this match has been Greg has run down to one or two balls and missed and Jeff has had an open table to run out almost every single game so far. And that's the whole difference of this match right now. They're both shooting well. Get around, slow down, slow down. That's a really good shot, actually. Now he's just got to focus and bear down and make the shot. I'd put uh, just a little bit, a uh, little bit, a little bit of high on it, so that way the cue ball comes between the two and the three, and he can either shoot the nine or if it doesn't go far enough, he can shoot that fifteen. Oh, he missed it, but he had great shape. He got where he wanted to. If he makes that ball, he's probably out here. So now we have the same situation again. Just like the other games, Jeff has a wide open table. All he has to do is just pocket balls now. too far he's got the one as a safety ball so he can make it and slide back over to the rail 
can shoot that. Oh, he's in the way of that. So he can slide back over and uh, get on the two. A little bit of bottom English. Oh, he missed it. He knew it. As soon as he hit it, he, he knew it. All right, Greg needs this game. Four balls he's got, he needs this game. I think the 15 goes in the upper left corner, so I would probably go, or I'm sorry, that's the 11 ball. Um, the 15 on the top right of the table, I would take that, kind of slide down to the bottom here, take that nine, take that 15, and then you can get on the eight and shoot it on the opposite corner. But let's see what he does. Okay. So fairly simple cut. Um, I would put a little high high left on it so it runs around the table and uh, slide past the one and he can get that two ball and then the one in the middle side and then the eight. Oh, I missed it. He just he just hit it too thick. He was worried about his cue ball. I think that's what that's why he missed it. He was worried about where the cue ball was going to go and didn't up, he didn't pay attention to the shot. Oh no, don't tell me that. I can't tell if he can see it or not. Looks like he can, looks like he's all good to go there. Oh. I think he's okay, I think he's okay. No, he didn't quite get there, but he's still fine. I think he's going to have to get the bridge out, unfortunately. Uh, should be okay. There you go. Nice shot. There you go. He's on the board. All right. That is eight ball. We are now shifting to nine ball. So five racks, eight ball. The rest is nine ball. Jeff needs three more, Greg needs six. All right, guys, with nine ball, obviously this is going to be a little bit more, a little bit different of strategy. Now 
Now it's mainly about you know how to maneuver your cue bar or how to get around the table and get position on your next shot. This is where thinking three balls ahead is really important. It was a good idea. Just didn't hit it enough. You got to hit it a little bit harder. But it was the right idea. I don't think he has a shot on the two to go anywhere. It won't go on the side. I don't think it'll get up in the corner. We'll see. So you played a safe, very good safe. Jeff's a smart player. Might get there. That might get there. And it got there. <laughs> <I don't laughs> he wasn't trying to play it, but he got it. So he does have a decent shot on the three. Um, he's got a good angle. He's going to have to give it a firm hit and just kind of draw it to the rail and come back out. He leaves him at the bank. Um, I would definitely try to go for the bank here. Uh, even if you miss the bank, um, your cue ball should come, you know, to the uh, to the right side of the table here, and the three ball will obviously go to the other side. So even if you miss, you're going to spread the balls apart pretty pretty far. He just got unlucky and hit the hit the edge of the pocket, which brought it back up. So if he didn't hit the edge of the pocket, it would have pushed it down to the other end. So a little unlucky, but still a tough shot. Now you try to play the safe. I think what we could have probably do is he could probably graze the three and do one of two things. He's going to go the other way. Close. I would have probably grazed it on the other side and pushed the three up between the three and five, or, or four and five, and then put the cue ball all the way down to the other end of the table. And that way you're creating distance and you're locking up that, you know, you're putting a good save on it. And uh, he might have gotten him. He did snooker him. And the four ball is in the way of the kick. So he might try to shoot between it. And he's going to put a lot of right hand English. So when he comes off the rail, it's just going to kick to the right or kick to our left. There you go. Good speed. Pushed him up to the rail. I'll be right back, guys. Give me 30 seconds.
All right, guys, sorry about that. Came off the rail a little bit. He could probably spin this over, spin this to the rail. I think the six goes past the nine. So he's just gonna thin it and spin it to that rail. Oh, don't scratch. Slow down. A little hard. It might carry him off the nine and just go right in. Karen took it high. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me a little bit better, Jim. Sorry about the low, the low uh, sound. Too hard. He didn't need to hit it so hard, but it gives him good. Uh, it actually gives him a good angle. He can come around the eight. He should. He's just gonna pocket the ball. The natural English will bring it around, and he'll be fine. Yeah, same. Same thing. He just needs to make it and uh, just come around the nine doesn't need to hit it very hard because the ball is going to run on him so he doesn't want to be too far down he wants to be about where that first diamond is just got a nice pocket speed shot and just let it come around It is slow down. That was it. That was perfect. He probably could have gone a little softer, but that's that was the concept that he needed. So if he can get it over the pocket, again these pockets are a little forgiving. And it should go in. He made it. Nice shot. Didn't even need the rail. Alright, just playing pretty solid. I'm gonna go check the score just to make sure real quick. Hold on. Solid break. And just like always, the one ball's covered. Go figure. So obviously he'll probably elect to push here. Um, not sure where he would push to. Maybe push to the a rail on top of the screen so that way he can't make the one but he can just kind of graze the one 
and make him try to force him to play a safe. He was trying to push, so I think the one goes. And uh, I think Greg was confused what he was doing too. So if he can make the one, he should go for it. Obviously, if he can't, I don't know why he'd be kicking at this ball. I'm a little confused, I guess. Apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about. So the one six was wired, but great hit. So with that kick combo, I mean, he hit it perfect, too. Uh, he opens up the one he needed. Bottom English will bring him right to the middle of the table. And he can get that, too. There you go. And then right to the middle. Now he wants to go. He's got the angle. He wants to go with a little bit of high. Just high English will get him back to the center of the table. And then he can get that three. I think the four might go past the eight, not too sure. Good shot. So he's perfect for the three. And let me see. I mean, he's. I think it does go. He's looking like it does. He isn't thinking too hard about it. can't hit it hard, he's just got to get on the five. Perfect. Nice shot. Should be pretty natural from here. Everything's laid out pretty good. Hopefully he doesn't get funky where he hits the nine and the nine sits right between him. Hopefully I didn't jinx him. Oh, he missed it. And it, it's exactly what it was. The nine was going to sit right in between them anyway. So I think he got a little lucky on that. It was just the nine was sitting at the angle where he was going to clip it, and it was just going to sit right there. So he got a little fortunate that he missed. Oh, he made it. Nice shot. It was good speed. It just, it just ended up, if he hits the ball first, I think he's good. But since he didn't hit the ball first, it kind of rolled up on the eight there. It looks like the eight nine is wired to the corner. Just if he wants to look at it, I don't know if he wants to. He might be trying that. Nope, I tried to play the safe.
It's got to slow down. It was the right shot. He just wanted it to sit up on that rail. He just hit it just a little too hard. So with this shot, you can't hit it too hard because otherwise it's just going to go on you. So he's just got to hit it nice pocket speed with a little bit of high right, and the ball's, the cue ball is going to carry around the table. It's going to be fine. It's basically just going to put it right in the center of the table for him. But he can't hit it too hard. And he hit it too hard. Oh, look at that. He tried going on. See, what do I know? I don't know anything. I guess I would have done it softer. Nice out. There it goes to two. Sometimes I don't know everything. Once in a while. But anyway, it was a good out by Greg. That's what he needed to do. It is now five to two. We are going to be playing nine ball from here on out the rest of this match. Um, eight ball was finished. They played eight ball first, so nine ball will be throughout the end of this match. All right, three's in, and he's got a shot on the one. All right, quick update for the stream. It looks like Nick just won his match, Nick Spriggs. So he has made it to the finals. So he is one match away for, for going to Florida. I think his opponent is Paul Adelini. So um, it looks like Wayne is still playing against Alan Cannington. Um, the winner of Wayne and Allen will play me for the finals. So those are the updates on those guys. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to see who else is around here. Pretty much coming down to the end. Um, these are the matches, right? The semifinal matches are pretty much going on right now. Um, I think this here is a semifinals match. So whoever wins this, let me, I'll check it quick. You know, obviously, you didn't want to hit the nine. Give me one second, guys. All right, guys, so I just checked. The winner of this match here on the stream will play in the finals against Tyler Adelini. So these are all semifinal matches that are going on right now.
Yes, Kelly. Uh, Nick just won. He is now in the finals. So he will be playing Paul. Nope, nope. Uh, oh, did, did Brett just get knocked out? Oh, I don't know. I've been focused on this match. I don't know who Brett lost to. I don't know the score of Wayne's match either. I couldn't tell you. I know he's playing Alan Kennington. Alan Kennington is a very solid shot. Great, great kick. And he's straight in for the seven. It's a really nice shot with Greg. Um, Alan Cannington is usually one of the guys that makes it to Florida. Um, so I don't know what the score is between Wayne and him, but the winner of that match will play me for the finals to go to Florida. So. All right. So he's going to stretch. He had it a little, a little harder than that, especially on this table right now. But I think he's still sitting fine. If he just makes the ball, he's going to come around the nine, and he should be straight in for the nine. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, did you did you make it down to Florida, Jerry? I don't know if you actually had the uh, your your preliminary yet up in. I don't even know where you guys are at. You guys are way up there. Different part of PA. All right, Jeff to take a six-two lead. It is now 6-2. So with the U.S. Amateur National Championships, um, basically once you make it to Florida, you play for, um, obviously it's more prestige, not a lot of cash prizes in this. Um, you win a very large trophy, very heavy trophy. I can tell you a few people that literally haven't... Uh, and, you know, have to ship it back. But um, and then you do qualify for a pro event. Um, so um, even though it's not a lot of cash to be won, it definitely is more of a prestigious event, and you get a chance to play in a pro event, which is obviously something we all love and you know want to do. And that's a thousand dollar prize right there. So um, good job, Jerry. Good job shooting last night. Or yeah, good job last night uh, up in the uh, Mount Pocono. Wow, that's up there. I'm going to have to come up there sometime. I've heard the Poconos are nice. All right, guys, I just confirmed Brett did win his match. Uh, so Brett is also in the finals. Um, he, he knocked out Jamie Brogdon. So, so Rich, yes, um, Brett is in the finals. Uh, Kelly, he did win. So I think it was a close one, though. Can you check Wayne's match? See where they're at? Just kind of, I don't think anybody's playing on 20 here. 
Really nice shot by Jeff. Very smart. So Allen Kennington is up 4 nothing on Wayne as of right now in a race of seven. Um, Allen's a solid shot. Wayne's got a big, this is a tough match for, for Wayne. Um, like I said, Allen is definitely one of those guys that makes it pretty much every year. So. So it's ball in hand. So everything's pretty wide open here. I think you can definitely do this to obviously win the match. He wants to make sure he gets on the right side of the, the left side of the four. So he's looking at his line right now. He wants to be on the correct side of the four because he wants to leave himself just a slight angle so he can drift to the middle, so that way he can get on the five easier. So that's why he decided to go that route, so he can just give himself a little bit of angle. So now he's got to cut the ball slightly to the left, and he's going to drift out to the middle of the table to get the five. Everything else plays pretty naturally. Um, if he can just stay off that nine, he should be okay. Good shot. A nice pocket speed shot. We'll just bring it around and it'll take the seven in the side. Doesn't need to hit it very hard. Well, a little harder than he wanted to, but I think it's going to work. He'll be just fine. Now it's just making balls. I like how he walks around the table to look at his next shot. That's obviously super important. And he left himself an angle. for the match and if he makes this Jeff will be in the finals. <laughs> 